Members, uh, next is House File 377, uh, uh, Chair Yua Kim. Uh, uh, a bill um, relate, relating to firefighters with cancer or heart disease uh, payment program uh, established for counseling and training and money appropriated. Uh, the chair will move to refer House File 377 to the Committee on Ways and Means. And uh, when we're done with our testimony, we will be laying this bill uh, over for possible inclusion in this committee's omnibus finance bill. Uh, Representative Joachim, your bill is before us. Uh, and you have an author's amendment, which I trust or I believe is, uh, we'll put the bill in the shape that the author wishes it to be before us today. Is that correct? Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you for hearing this bill in the A1 reflects language changes requested by NAMI that better reflect the language regarding mental health programming. Very well. Uh, members, the chair will move the A1 amendment to House File 377. Um, this puts the bill in the shape that the author wishes it to be. Um, any uh, discussion? If not, the clerk will take the roll on the A1 amendment. Chair Mariani. Aye. Aye. Vice Chair Frazier. Aye. Representative Johnson. Aye. Representative Edelson. Aye. Representative Feist. Aye. Representative Grossel. Aye. Representative Hollins. Aye. Representative Hewitt. Aye. Representative Cleavorn. Aye. Representative Long. Aye. Representative Lucero. Representative Lucero. Representative Mueller. Mueller votes yes. Representative Novotny. Novotny, aye. Representative O'Neill, excused. Representative Pinto. Oh, okay. Representative O'Neill. O'Neill, aye. I voted aye on the last bill too. I don't know if you heard me. Okay, I did not, but I will note that. Thank you. Representative Pinto. Representative Pinto. Representative Poston. Aye. Representative Raleigh. Ali, aye. Representative Vang. Aye. Representative Zhang. Aye. Representative Lucero. Sorry, I've got two Zooms going on at the same time. I'm in yes. Okay, Representative Pinto. That concludes roll call with 18 ayes uh, and one abstain. Sure, well, uh, oh, members, uh, the uh, amendment, the A1 amendment is adopted to House File 377. And just a quick pause, so the record will reflect that Representative O'Neill um, uh, had cast a uh, positive vote, uh, I vote on House File 109, uh, find a motion to refer to the Committee on Labor. Uh, Representative Joaquin, um, your bill, and then you've got a number of testifiers, and, you know, as usual, we're always pushing the clock here. So welcome, uh, Representative Joaquin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, members. For some quick background, the MinFire Initiative is a 24-hour hotline that was started three years ago with funds from a small grant and many fundraisers. Within the first 24 hours of the hotline being open, it became apparent that there was a dire need in our firefighting community. Firefighters face cancer, cardiac issues, and mental health challenges at higher rates of the rest than the rest of the population just for doing their jobs. Jobs that we ask of them and that many of us are not willing or able to do ourselves. They perform these jobs without hesitation and we need to have their backs. The Hometown Heroes Program is one of the ways that we can do that. Members, there are letters of support that are in your electronic packets from NAMI, Minnesota State Fire Department Association, American Heart Association, Minnesota Professional Firefighters Association and the Minnesota Fire Chiefs. I have with me George Upson from Min Fire Initiative, who is a retired fire chief from Eden Perry. He will quickly go over the bill. We also have a few testifiers who will share their stories and what a program like this would have meant to them if it would have been in place. These folks are Chris Parsons, president of Minnesota Professional Firefighters and a captain with the St. Paul Fire Department, Steve Shapira, a retired St. Paul captain and cancer survivor, Jen Friends, wife of Matt Friends, former chief of the Rice Lake Fire Department. I know that the committee's time is tight so that we each will only take a few minutes to tell you their stories, but it's really their voices that you need to hear. 
Thank you, uh, Chair Yuakim. A very important story that needs to be told. We've heard this bill in prior years, and uh, it's not unusual for new members uh, uh, for sometimes, sometimes even good, important bills to take um, uh, some time to get across the finish line. Hopefully, we can do that this year. Uh, with that, I'll call then uh, Chief Espenson uh, to come forward and um, provide us uh, testimony. Please state your name for the record, Chief. Thank you, Chair Mariani and members of the committee. My name is George Esbenson. I am the president of uh, the Minnesota Firefighter Initiative. Somewhere along the line, I missed a meeting and they had an election and that's how that happens. So, um, and I also am a 32 year veteran of the Eden Prairie Fire Department, the last 17 as the fire chief. Um, I just wanna briefly uh, recap the bill. So this bill seeks to do five things, uh, but those five things combined will end the chaos that is the Minnesota firefighter experience when it comes to cancer, cardiac, and emotional trauma, the three big killers of active uh, firefighters in the state of Minnesota. This bill will provide a statewide critical care policy when an active firefighter gets a cancer or cardiac diagnosis, they will uh, get a, uh, a, a, a check of $30,000 to help them defray the costs of things that aren't covered by uh, health insurance. It will create a MinFire uh, employee assistance program so that firefighters have a place to reach out and get fire-centric uh, counseling. Right now what happens is when you go to your standard EAP for those few firefighters that even have access to it, um, those people that are doing their very best to counsel the firefighters, but they have no idea what the firefighter journey is all about. It will create an additional uh, EAP resource for firefighters that need more than those initial five visits. It'll provide ongoing MinFire wear training for all 20,000 firefighters in Minnesota annually, because quite frankly, one of the keys to changing outcomes for firefighters in Minnesota is changing the culture of the Minnesota Fire Service and providing education and mitigation strategies around the issues of cancer, cardiac, and emotional trauma. The bill will also provide and sustain ongoing awareness training for medical and mental health providers, many of whom do not understand the unique rigors of the fire service. For instance, firefighters tend to get cancers and cardiac issues at much younger ages than the general population and suffer fatalities at two and a half to six times those of the general population when it comes to cancer, cardiac, and emotional trauma. All, all combine these five things is, is a holistic approach to addressing the problems. This is 32 years of experience and going to way too many hospital visits and funerals for my active firefighter colleagues over the course of my career. We've studied this very carefully. We have, as you see, many letters of support. And this is an investment in the Minnesota Fire Service that needs to happen so we can change the paradigm. Thank you for your time and I'll be available for questions after the other testifiers. And I'd like to now turn it over to my colleague, Chris Parsons. Thank you, Chief Espenson, and thank you for your service uh, to our, our state for our, so many years and your ongoing continued service, albeit drafted uh, in. Um, welcome to the committee, uh, Mr. Parsons. Please state your name for the record and give us your testimony. Good morning, uh, Chair Mariani and members of the committee. My name is Chris Parsons. I'm president of the Minnesota Professional Firefighters. I'm also a uh, captain with the uh, St. Paul Fire Department, and I am here in, uh, in strong support of House File uh, 377. Um, I'm also here uh, representing the uh, colleagues from my own department, the uh, five colleagues that have uh, passed away in the last five years due to uh, cancer, cardiac, and sadly, uh, by their own hands. Uh, for too long in the fire service, uh, we've been asked to fix our problems with bake sales, meat raffles, chewing gum, and bailing wire. And it's uh, time that, uh, that uh, policymakers and uh, uh, other folks have, have uh, to step up and uh, um, uh, look out for the men and women that are providing the important uh, safety net in our state. Uh, this bill, uh, from the moment it's passed, will provide uh, relief for 22,000 men and women that are serving the citizens of Minnesota 
And uh, it's for a relatively small investment. And I urge the committee to uh, pass this bill. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Parsons. And you and I have had opportunity to talk about this uh, uh, approach for a couple of years now. And um, I know that it's rooted in um, um, reality and responding to uh, the loss of your um, your your colleagues and friends. Uh, you have my continued um, support and empathy uh, on that. Uh, uh, but there's more that we can do than, than uh, to offer that, uh, particularly in terms of preventing, uh, you know, future losses. And so thank you for the great care and, and love, uh, quite frankly, uh, that uh, you and your colleagues have put into constructing this proposal. Uh, with that, we'll move on to uh, Steve uh, Shapira, uh, retired St. Paul Fire, Cap uh, Saint Paul Fire Captain, uh, Captain Shapira. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and uh, committee. Uh, my name is Steve Shapira. I am a retired fire captain from St. Paul, and I have 23 years in the fire service, and I am also the Minnesota State Director for the Firefighter Cancer Support Network. So I field the calls generally along with MinFire when we get a diagnosis in the state. Uh, my story starts as a cancer survivor back in 2014 when I had some abdominal pain in the spring. And I started a round of um, treatments and uh, inquiries to find out what was wrong with me. And it took about six or eight months and I had every treatment you could think of, numerous blood draws, x-rays, CTs. Uh, I had an upper GI endoscopy, um, ultrasounds, every treatment known. And I started to realize after being an EMT all these years, they couldn't really find out what was going on with me. At that time, my kids were, my three girls were a lot younger at that point. And it was the fall of the year. And I said, I'm just gonna take a time out with everything and just give them a normal Thanksgiving and Christmas. And I picked up uh, in, the, in, the spring of, uh, in the spring of 2014 at the University of Minnesota after a referral from a friend. I sat down in March at the University of Minnesota. They came in and they took my vital signs and the internist came in, shook my hand and he pulled up my CT that was taken six months before. And in five seconds and three clicks of the mouse, he looked at me and said, you have non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And he circled it right on the screen like uh, like John Madden would on a Monday night football play. And I knew at that point everything in my life was going to change. I knew my career was in jeopardy, my finances, my relationship with my wife, my kids. Uh, and when I speak about this, it ended up forcing me into retirement. Uh, so non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, if you're not familiar, is a cancer that firefighters get at a 51% greater rate than the general public. Uh, the average onset, onset age for that cancer is 65. I got it at 45, um, and it's a blood-based cancer similar to a leukemia. So the only treatment for that really is chemotherapy. So I started with eight aggressive rounds of chemotherapy very shortly thereafter, uh, and continued with another 12 rounds. So 20 total rounds of chemotherapy after two and a half years, which as I said, forced me into retirement. Uh, we had no support system at that point. And in fact, when I got my diagnosis of occupational firefighter cancer, that was the first time I had heard of occupational firefighter cancer because at that point, the state of Minnesota had not had any training in occupational firefighter cancer. And I had no resources. Their MinFire wasn't created at that point. And we certainly didn't have any sort of a network of trained medical people to understand the differences that firefighters go through and firefighter and the different screenings and tests that firefighters need and that we do need to be screened at younger ages for all these different ailments. Um, so I stand here today uh, as a survivor and for a voice of those who are no longer here. Um, it's as Mr. Parsons said, it's too many to count. Literally, it is too many to count that we've lost to all these combined. In, per in particular, as I said, I feel the call for cancer and we just, I just received a call again last week of another really tragic diagnosis. So I stand here for all of the people who do not have voices for this anymore. And in particular, I stand here for my friend, our friend who served the community for 25 years, Mike Pider, who lost his battle in August of last year. Thank you and I'll stand for any questions also. Thank you, Captain Shapira. Um, and my, uh, my condolences on the loss of your, your friend and our public servant um, uh, as well. And thank you for your public service um, um, to the people, uh, good people of St. Paul, my city and people of Minnesota. And um, it, it seems to me uh, uh, a, um, 
more than reasonable, but a right request uh, that we uh, together step up and stand with our, our, uh, our firefighters uh, and provide them with the safety net uh, uh, that you and others are calling for. Thank you, sir. Um, with that, uh, we have Jen uh, France, um, uh, who is the uh, widow of cardiac victim Matt France, uh, fire chief, um, was a fire chief in Rice Lake, uh, Minnesota. Um, Ms. France, uh, welcome uh, to the committee. Um, please state your name for the record and provide us with your testimony. Uh, good morning. Thank you, Mr. Chair and committee members. Um, my name is Jen France. Um, I am here today to speak to you a little bit about my late husband, and I appreciate you taking the time to listen. Um, on December 9th, 2013, the day started out with Matt getting an early morning call uh, for mutual aid for a chimney fire. Uh, for us, this wasn't unusual. He was often up in the middle of the night, you know, running out the door. <sighs> When he returned home, he was able to get a little bit of rest before he had to get up and go do his regular civilian job as a UPS driver. Um, communication throughout the day was off and on, texting, you know, when he had a chance. Uh, eventually those texts stopped coming and he stopped responding. And I didn't really think anything of it. I just thought he was busy. Um, but three hours later, I was met in the driveway at home with the sheriff's deputy who had come to give me the news that my husband would not be returning home. He had suffered what they believed was a massive heart attack. And I apologize, <laughs> it's been a while, but it still hits hard. Of course. Um, and Matt, he was such a dedicated chief. He was uh, truly, uh, aware of his fire family's health. He wanted to make sure everybody took care of themselves and that they had the resources to do that and to receive help if they needed it. Um, unfortunately, circumstances are out of our control. And actually 14 months after his death, his department lost another member due to a cardiac event. Um, so this has become very important to me and I know that if he was here, he would be right out in front supporting this. Um, he always wanted to take care of everyone and even himself. He was a healthy 42 year old man. So when he died of a cardiac event, that was just, it was shocking for all of us. Um, but as I said, I know he would be right out front supporting a bill like the Hometown Heroes Assistance Program. And since he is not here, I feel it is my duty to still support what he did for our community, especially as a volunteer, and to, to back support for this, this bill. And I hope that um, members will take this into consideration and, and move forward and approve this so that we can help our, our firefighters and give them the assistance that they need to, to stay healthy and, and to be in a good place so they can help us. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Oh, we appreciate you. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. France. And uh, I, I am certain I speak on behalf of our entire committee here of extending our love and our um, deep condolences to you and healing, healing thoughts and prayers uh, for you and your family. Um, thank you for the gift of the public service that your husband uh, provided to the good people of, of Minnesota. Thank uh, you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, members, uh, we have two members, uh, uh, Representative Hewitt and Cleveland, and then we're going to move the way over because we need to get to Representative Markwart's uh, bill, our final bill uh, here uh, before us. And so... Uh, Mayor Mariani, I do have an amendment for this bill. Rep Representative Johnson, you're correct. There is an A2 amendment. Representative Johnson, why don't we just go to your amendment? Uh, Chair Mary, any members? Um, this is the same, basically the same amendment as I had yesterday, but this is a little different. Uh, yesterday, the uh, grant money was going to a department of the state, the Department of uh, Office of OJP. 
This time we're giving a, and if I remember correctly of me, we don't even have the amount of dollars into a nonprofit. It's not a department, state department of the state. It's a nonprofit organization. That's a 501c3. Um, I, su I support this bill very much, but it really gets me concerned because I actually been sitting here for the last 20 minutes trying to find even the list of the board of directors of this nonprofit, and I cannot find them. Um, when we're giving uh, this money away that's designed to go to the heroes in our communities, our firefighters, along with uh, a lot of fire, uh, law enforcement officers in our communities are also firefighters. I want to make sure that the money actually gets to them. So that's where this amendment is very important. Uh, this amendment requires no more than 1% of the total amount appropriated in your administrative costs. I want to have this money get to our heroes. It's important that they do. They're gone through, through a lot. They've gone, uh, they give us a lot. 90% of our fighters are volunteers. And without our volunteers, we uh, wouldn't have fire departments. Our cities couldn't, a lot of our cities can't, uh, small cities especially can't afford to have full-time fire departments. They don't have the tax base to do that. Unlike Minneapolis and St. Paul, and a lot of these uh, urban cities, uh, the rural cities is different. We need our volunteers. And so I'm gonna ask for your support to, for this amendment to make sure that the funds do get to the firefighters and the hometown heroes. Very well, thank you, Representative Johnson. And just to make sure, uh, Representative Johnson, uh, moves adoption of the A2 uh, amendment. Uh, uh, Representative Joaquin. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to ask members for a no vote on this amendment. Um, Representative Johnson, those same heroes that you're talking about are the ones that run this program. And small town firefight departments that don't have the resources would benefit from having this program so that their firefighters could have the chance to have support. Um, I wish you would have come to talk to me about this amendment. This is the third year we've had the Hometown Heroes Act introduced and the second time it's been in front of this committee and you have not approached me with your concerns. Since this bill is being laid over though, I, I would like to take time to work with the advocates and see what they think the cost would be in administering this program. It's an important program, it's a large program. And I wanna make sure that we don't put an arbitrary low number on administrative costs. So um, members, please vote no. Very well. Um, Chair Mariani. Representative Johnson. Uh, there again, uh, the concern I have is right now the bill has no parameters around administrative costs. We could give them $3 million and they might take, they could take a third of that because there is no parameters just for administrative costs. I don't think they would. I believe it's a good organization, but I, but we do, do need to do our due diligence to make sure that uh, we have parameters set. Thank you. Representative uh, Johnson, I'm just uh, curious, um, and I guess this is a question for both you and, and Chair you, uh, I, I, I do think it makes sense that uh, there be um, a clear expectation of what administrative costs are without prejudice here. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if um, um, it would be possible for, we'll take a vote on the amendment for sure if you want, but I'm wondering if we need to do that um, I, I think we heard from Representative Joaquin that she would uh, work uh, with the uh, uh, advocates to be able to identify that. And I presume that would be working with you, at least I would hope so. Um, so that's one approach, uh, but we can certainly vote an amendment. So I'm just offering you that uh, opportunity for Representative Johnson. Uh, if she's willing to work and make sure we get the right parameters set in, I would be more than happy to withdraw the amendment. Very well, thank you, Representative uh, Johnson. Representative Joachim, uh, just for the record, um, uh, working with Representative Johnson uh, in terms of um, coming back with uh, uh, some answer uh, relative to this issue of administrative uh, costs so that we're real clear about where the people's money would, uh, you, know, uh, you know, how it will be spent. Yes, Chair. Um, Chair Mariani, you have my word on that. Very well, all right, thank you both. Thank you. Hey, Thank you both, I appreciate that very, very much. Uh, with that, uh, members, uh, we're going to um, lay this bill over, so we will be working this bill. Uh, and 
boy, I'm hoping we can get this across uh, the finish line uh, this year, Representative Joachim. Thank you so much for bringing this bill forward, and thank you for all the uh, wonderful public servants um, uh, and family of public servants who have been with us here. Uh, thank you, Chair Mariani. I just wanted to say thank you so much for hearing it again. This is an epidemic in our firefighting community, one that our cities, towns, and townships can't handle on their own. And as a state, I believe that we're morally obligated to step up and help, and I, I thank you. We thank you as well, uh, uh, Representative Yorkie. With that, the chair uh, lays over House File 377 for possible inclusion in this committee's omnibus finance bill.